Development environments. Everybody needs them. Doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're writing JavaScript code or front-end or back-end, or maybe you're an operator that writes YAML or HCL or whatever you're doing, you need a development environment. And being more efficient when developing, even if that's writing YAML, is very important. So what do we do when we develop something? We write code, we build something, we run tests, and we deploy something. That's the highest level possible explanation of what we do. And hopefully we do those things in short cycles, maybe every couple of minutes, you know, you write some code and then hopefully automatically something is being built and some tests are being run and then it's being deployed in any of those orders. And then we repeat and we repeat and we repeat. And we can do that remotely, we can do that locally, we can do that in a combination of the two, We'll see. Anyways, today we are going to explore one potentially amazing tool that can help us with our development environment. I already explored in this channel quite a few tools that are helping us one way or another with development environments. Gitpod and Octeto, for example, give us remote development environments. vCluster enables us to create virtual clusters, again, for development environments that are somewhere else. Code Zero is all about forwarding traffic from our laptop to somewhere else and vice versa and so on and so forth. The links to all those videos are in the description and you can see them here, the banners. But today I'm not exploring that type of tool. Instead, I will explore something very similar to Scaffold and DevSpace and I have videos for those two as well. Those two enable us to easily build and reload applications and deploy applications and do typical operations that we do after we finish writing code. And today I'm going to focus on something similar but potentially better. We'll see about that. I'm going to talk about Tilt. Tilt is all about smart rebuilds and live updates and quite a few other things. A short explanation would be that Tilt gives us almost everything we need to develop applications that are ultimately running in Kubernetes. But it doesn't have to be Kubernetes because we can use it for other use cases, but Kubernetes would be the primary use case. So let's see what it can do. Let's try to use Tilt to set up a development environment. I'm already inside a Git repository that contains code of my application. It contains Tilt file as well, which I will show you later. For now, I want to focus on what Tilt can do. And I'm going to execute a single simple command that says Tilt up. And then a few moments later, I have an output that says, hey, I can open it in browser. I can stream the logs. I can open some legacy terminal mode, which I don't care about. So let's see which one will I choose among those. Let it be space. Let's open it in a browser and see what we got with Tilt up. And over here, I can see my application in a few other things. There is Tilt file, there is DevOps Toolkit, which is the application that I'm working on right now. There are some tests and there is something uncategorized. It seems the Tilt got confused with something. By the way, that's my namespace, namespace that I created there, but doesn't really matter. What does matter is that I have a silly looking web application, which is not so great, but it demonstrates very easily that uh, Tilt already created some things in a local environment. And in my case today, that local environment is Rancher Desktop, but it could be any other Kubernetes cluster. It could be Minikube, it could be GKE, EKS, AKS, Docker Desktop, if you enable the Kubernetes or whatever else you might be using. And if I go to details, I can see those same uh, things on the left side. I don't know how to categorize them, uh, fragments or parts of my application, of my Tilt definition. I will probably go through it later. What does matter is that if I go to details, I can see the logs of all of those groups of resources. I can see my tests as well. It says that I'm too lazy to write tests and I indeed was. I was faking it by writing echo instead of real tests, 
but it demonstrates that I can run tests and you will see later that all that is happening every time I change any part of the code, but we are getting there, so be patient. And I can see the logs of everything else, like whatever is in uncategorized, whatever is in DevOps Toolkit, the application itself, and so on and so forth. Now to see what's really going on, I will leave Tilt running in one terminal session and I will open a new one and execute kubectl dash dash namespace dev, that's where I deployed my application. I want to describe the deployment of my application. Now you might be wondering why am I describing? Well, I want to show you the image itself. And if you pay attention to the image entry, you can see that it's vfrsic, that looks normal, and DevOps Toolkit, that's still my application, but the tag is tilt, build, and then some number 16, 48, and so on and so forth. So when I said tilt up, tilt, built my image, pushed that image to the Kubernetes cluster, branch desktop in this case, and then modified my manifest so that instead of whatever was specified as image, now it says that image with the tag the tilt built a moment ago. So, so far we can see that it is building images, it is modifying the manifest so that those images are included into the manifest and it is starting uh, the application, deploying the application and we got the web UI that we can use to see the logs and a few other details, which we could, by the way, see from the terminal as well. And it also opened a port, a node port to my application so that I can easily access it and I can demonstrate that by going back to the browser and then opening that link that says localhost 8080 and there we go. That's my application. It's up and running locally. It is showing me whatever the application is. And from now on, I can keep developing that application. I can write code, I can change code, I can do, uh, you will see what I can do. So let's actually make a change to the application and see what I can indeed do. This is a Hugo application, so I will change config toml and uh, I will probably modify some text. I will add to DevOps Toolkit series, the title in the web page, suffix that says love stilt. So it will be DevOps Toolkit series love stilt with an exclamation mark. And that's my simulation of development. I modified the application and I want to see what will happen next. And in that spirit, I will save those changes and then go back to my application and hit refresh. I will refresh it in a browser. But before I do that, let's go back to logs. And over there in logs, I can see that it is doing something. It is building the image. It modified again one more time. It modified the manifest so that now it uses yet another new tag of that image. It pushed that image to the cluster and now it should be ready and deployed the new release of my application, the development release, right? It's not a real release. So let's go back to the application, click that refresh button, and now it says it. It says DevOps Toolkit series loves Tilt. It did everything that uh, it should do, and I can focus only on two things, and that's writing code and uh, refreshing my browser to check whether it works. I mean, not all applications are browser-based, but you get what I'm trying to say. You just write code and verify that the application is working and behaving as expected. Now you might think this is magic, and it is partially magic, but there is actually a configuration file called tilt file where I define how my application should behave and what tilt should do. And at the very top, I have Docker built. So if I would like to build this application with Docker, I can do that. It's a single line that says build with Docker image with this name. And this is the context, which is dot the current directory, but I commented that part because I'm not using Docker here. If you're using Docker, then that's how you would build. I'm not using Docker. So as an alternative, I could use any custom build. I could say, hey, I do not want to use any of the build methods that you provide. I can build in any way I want to build something. And then that would be custom build, which would run my script that would do whatever it needs to be done to build. But I'm not using that either. I have that commented as well because I'm using NerdCuttl with Rancher Desktop. And by the way, there are videos for those as well. And to use NerdCuttl, I can use the plugin. There are quite a few plugins and this is one of them. So I'm loading the plugin and then I'm saying, hey, I want you to use NerdCuttl to build and the reference is VFRC DevOps Toolkit. That's actually what it will look for in manifests. 
and the context is the current directory. So I can easily switch from one build method to another, either using whatever is baked in or through plugins or by writing my own scripts. So anything goes. And further on, I have Kate's YAML instruction, which says, hey, this is where the manifests are. I want you to use customize because that's what Victor likes, but it could be Helm, it could be pure YAML and so on and so forth. And that's the directory which is customized overlays dev. And further on, I want you to open a port to port forward 8080 on my laptop to 80 inside of the container that is running as part of that application. And I want you to load some resources, which I'm going to call tests. And I'm going to execute a command that says that I'm too lazy to write tests for this demo, but it could be any other command that you would use to run tests. Now this file, tilt file, is written in Starlark. And if you're not familiar with Starlark, it is a dialect of Python. Now, whether you like Python or not, that's up to you. But what does matter is that it was designed for Bazel build system, which if I'm not mistaken, comes from Google and it is absolutely fantastic with certain problems, but that's not the subject of this video. What does matter is that you have domain specific language, which is Starlock, it is based on Python, and we can use it to do almost anything that we want in relation to our development environments. What I'm using right now in this demo is only a fraction, a tiny fraction of what we can do. Now I mentioned extensions or plugins, so I'm not sure how Tilt calls them. Anyways, extensions to what it can do. Those are community efforts that are maintained by different people. And if I go to the repository of those extensions, we can see that there are quite a few additions that we can plug into Tilt. Almost anything anybody ever thought of in relation to the types of operations Tilt does is available as a plugin. And if that's not enough, as I already mentioned, you can run any script you want. And just to give you a sensation of the scope of the things that Tilt can do without really going through all of them, because that would take hours and hours, we can go to the available functions in Tilt and then you can see, look at that, there are quite a few functions. This is a really powerful tool that can do almost anything and it's very, very extensive. And if that's not enough, you can go to CLI reference and see all the commands that we can do with Tilt. Most of the time you will use Tilt up, but there are quite a few others that can come in handy easily. And when you're finished working, you do not want to leave right away because that would mean that your application is still running, wasting resources and so on and so forth. So what we can do is go to the terminal where I'm running Tilt, uh, stop the process with Control C and then execute Tilt down and that will destroy everything that it created and leave your system clean. And if you don't believe that the system is really clean, you can always execute kubectl, get pods, and there you go, no pods. Everything removed as if it never existed. As I mentioned at the very beginning, development environments are all about coding, building, running tests and deploying stuff. Now, Tilt does not help much or at all with coding. If you want to code on your laptop, then use Visual Studio Code or whatever you are using or whatever you prefer. If you want remote environments, then Gitpod is absolutely amazing. There are quite a few other tools. What does matter is that Tilt does not go into coding, but it does help with building and it does help with running tests and it does help with deploying and it does that continuously or not continuously, but whenever we change or modify the code. So it's a loop that is being executed every time we persist changes by saving them. Now you might be tempted to say, hey, I can use Tilt for other things. I can use it to deploy to production. In theory, you can, some people do, but don't. Tilt is amazing when it's limited to temporary environments, whether those are environments created by pull requests, whether that's what you use on your laptop, whether it's development environment remotely running in some other cluster, doesn't matter. But what does matter is that Tilt is absolutely amazing. Probably my favorite tool of the kind for temporary or preview or development environments, you know, those that are not permanent. So not for staging, not for production and so on and so forth, but for preview environments, temporary environments, it's absolutely amazing. Now let's talk about pros and cons. Let's start with cons because there is no negative thing I can think of except Starlark. 
some people might like it, some people might not like it. It really depends on the preference of Starlark. That dialect of Python, the DSL that Tilt uses, might be a negative thing or not, depending on what you really, really like. And that's the only negative thing I can think of. The positive sides are there are quite a few. To begin with, the same style, like that I said, it could be a bad thing, it could be actually a great thing because it's DSL, it's backed by Python, and that means that we are not limited. You know, like in YAML or JSON or Maven or whatever we are using normally to do those types of things, it could be very limited because it's not a real language, right? And this is a real language that allows us to specify anything we want and it does it really, really well while still providing the main specific type of instructions. So Starlight can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. It is easy. It's very, very easy to work with Tilt. It has amazing docs or one of the best uh, docs that I've seen in my life. It is potentially the best. Yeah, I'm absolutely amazing documentation. It's very extensible. You can easily extend it to do anything you want, either by using one of the existing plugins or extensions, by writing your own extension or just executing a shell script or something like that. And finally, Finally, it has hot reload. So I do not need to think about, hey, I need to execute this command, I need to execute that command. I just let it run in the background and it will continuously build, test, uh, deploy, and so on and so forth. Or as I said before, not continuously, but whenever I change my source code. So it's absolutely amazing, try it out. And the only question left to answer is whether it is better or worse than uh, what should I compare it with? Scaffold and DevSpace and a few others. By the way, the links to DevSpace Scaffold are in the description. Anyways, I should compare it with those. Would that be interesting? If you would like me to compare Tilt with others in that area, let me know and I will do my best to do the video. And that's about it. See you next time. Cheers.